have you all been? Today, we're going to continue with the basics of Betaflight, getting into the Configuration tab. I know it's been a while since we've sat down and we've done these videos, but now that winter's here, hopefully we're going to be able to complete this series. Today, I'm going to be using my old wizard. This is the second generation Wizard X220. It's got the SP Racing F3 flight controller in it. And, well, I'm going to use it because I'm feeling nostalgic. And I think this is something that a lot of you guys are going to have. So, why not use a model that you guys are going to use, right? This is an awesome quad. This is a great place to start. And really, I think that's why I'm going to use it today. Um, all right, well, I think that's enough of an introduction. Let's get this thing jacked into USB and connect it in the computer. Give her the old pluggy plug plug. Okay, with the quad plugged into the USB on the computer, I'm gonna make sure that the COM port is available and I'm gonna hit connect. If you're unfamiliar with any of that, please check back in the previous videos in this series. I think you'll find the answer that you're looking for. Well, all right, now that the quad's connected, we've already done quite a bit inside Betaflight. We've gone over the setup and the ports tab. Today, we're going to get into the configuration. The configuration tab is probably one of the most complicated other than the PID tuning tab. Uh, and it is, it's important. This is one of the most important tabs that you're going to work with. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on each of the items and I'm going to try to clearly describe what they are and what they do, uh, hopefully, so you'll be successful with your beta flight setup. Um, well, let's get back to the configurator and we'll take a look at some of this stuff. Okay, with the configuration tab opened, we're presented right here at the top with a layout of our aircraft. This is important. By default, it's going to ship as quad X, you know, an X frame quad. Uh, but if you're not flying a quad, there are a ton of options in here for all kinds of different aircraft that Betaflight is capable of controlling. If you're watching this, you're probably just going to stay on quad X. If you're getting into this other stuff, I'm willing to guess you know what you're doing. So leave this at quad. This is what we want. We're not going to get in any custom mixing with this, at least in this series, as that's something that's a little bit more advanced. We're also going to leave our motors in their current location and also keep the direction the same, keep things easy. There's no reason to change this, especially right now. That's it. We don't even touch this. Just make sure it says quad. Moving along, we have our ESCs and our motor features. Now, by default, this is probably gonna be on one shot, I'm guessing. It's been a little while since I've done a clean installation of Betaflight. Um, well, kind of now that I'm feeling the kiss and I like that groove, but uh, whatever, let's keep going. Um, so anyway, you're the protocol that's going to be controlling your ESCs. This is kind of important. Uh, a couple years ago, we we're using one shot and then multi-shot. Uh, now we've moved, for the most part, to D-Shot. This is probably what you're going to be using. If you're flying a full-size quad, you're definitely not using brushed. That's more of a tiny whoop style class. Uh, stay away from that in this case. And really, for this quad that I'm using, uh, I have replaced the ESCs, and so I'm looking at the D-Shot protocol. If you are purchasing new ESCs, more than likely they're going to tell you what protocol they're capable of using. Uh, in this case, these ESCs are a couple years old. They are not 32-bit, and I'm going to select DSHOT 600. All right, so motor stop. If you enable this, this is going to prevent the motors from spinning up when you first arm the quad. However, if you do have air mode enabled, this probably isn't going to do anything for you. Um, really with a modern quad, turn it on, turn it off. I don't think it makes much of a difference either way. As we move down, we have our board and sensor alignment. This can be critical if the orientation of the flight controller has been changed. And a great example of that, and of course my cable's a little loose here, 
when Ishin built the wizard, they did rotate the flight controller 90 degrees, and that's something that absolutely has to be changed in the configurator under the configuration tab. And if we look at my board, see here, minus 90 degrees on the yaw axis, this is critical. If you rotate your board and you don't make the correct change here, then guaranteed your quad is gonna flip out and you're gonna have a bad time. Um, so pay attention to this. If you face the board forward, no big deal, but if it's rotated to make the installation easier, then you need to figure this out. Uh, as we're going, we have the system configuration. Uh, enable gyro 32 hertz sampling mode. Most of you aren't gonna be using this. Uh, this is really if you're getting into like the 16 and 32K PID loops, which this flight controller simply can't even handle. Uh, underneath this, we have our gyro frequency and we have our PID loop frequency. This is gonna vary in some cases depending on what you're running. If you have a F4 flight controller, then you're probably just running this on 8K, 8K and you're not having a problem. Because the Wizard has an older flight controller in it, it's the SP Racing F3, it's still a fantastic flight controller, it's just a couple years old now, and it, it just doesn't have the horsepower under the hood as a modern F4 does. So because of that, we have to reduce our gyro update frequency and also our PID loop frequency. And when you're choosing this, especially, well honestly, if you're on a F4 board, 8K, 8K all day, don't even worry about it. But on anything else, if, if it's an F3 or below, you really need to pay attention to this. And I put emphasis here because this will have a direct effect on your CPU load. And right now, this is actually kind of high. It's a little borderline. Uh, so I might want to drop this down to like uh, 2K, 2K loop, save and reboot. And when this comes back up, we'll see how my CPU load has now been seriously reduced. Um, honestly, in this case, I think if I disable the accelerometer, I can probably get away with the 4K 2K loop. Let's try that. Yeah, so you see with the accelerometer off, I'm down 17%. I'm going to bump this up to 4K, 4K now, see what happens. All right, so with the accelerometer disabled, essentially you're going to use the accelerometer uh, for flight-assisted modes, like angle mode. It's going to help keep you upright. Um, I fly acro. I only fly acro. Even though I don't really fly this wizard, I might let somebody else fly it, so I would keep this enabled for the most part. Um, but this is just an example to show you how if you're trying to squeak a little bit more performance out of your flight controller, how enabling and disabling items can help uh, free up CPU load. Um, so the accelerometer, this is essentially what's gonna keep you upright. Uh, barometer and magnometer. Not all flight controllers are gonna have these sensors and you're gonna find that most of what we're using for FPV don't have them and really you're probably not even gonna use them. Uh, okay, let's see as we move down, accelerometer trim. Uh, this is gonna be if you have a little bit of drift in angle mode. This is very common to put a little adjustment in here. Say for example, if you're flying a tiny whoop style craft and it's kind of floating a little bit on you. Really angle mode isn't ideal for leveling and I'm gonna tell you to learn how to fly acro. That's how you're gonna solve all the angle mode problems. But as a beginner, if you have a little bit of drift, this can be adjusted in order to help correct that. Really though, every time you plug a battery into the quad, it's gonna recalibrate uh, your sensors. And so if you make a change here, that change may not be accurate if you power it up again and you could now have more drift in a direction you don't want it. Uh, really use the trim switches on your radio for a small amount of adjustment if you're really relying on it. Uh, otherwise, learn how to compensate for the float and get yourself an acro as soon as possible. Personalization, we can enter a craft name if you so desired. We call it the old wizard. Let's see, camera angle. 
I personally don't set an angle in here, but this is something that's going to help with like coordinated rolls and whatnot. I'm not going to really get into that. We've got the area to configure our receiver. Right here, we're going to pick, well, what type of receiver we're using. Uh, the PPM is old style. Um, so is PWM. PPM you might find on the second generation wizard. It is a one wire connection, um, but it's not as good as a serial based. Um, I doubt you're going to be using MSP or SPI, so let's just concentrate on the serial based receiver. This is going to get you all your major stuff. Uh, Fly Sky, FR Sky, Spectrum Crossfire, all your selections are going to be made within here. So once you pick your receiver, well, they call it receiver mode here. I might call it a type, but whatever, same difference. Once you make your selection here, then you need to tell it um, what kind of receiver protocol you're actually using. And here's where we have all our common stuff, like I just mentioned. We have Spectrum, we have SBUS, which is for FR Sky, we have IBUS, which is Fly Sky, we have Crossfire, uh, we have FR Sky F port, which is a single wire with telemetry, uh, and we even have stuff in here that I don't even know what it is because I never came across it in my whole life. If you're using FR Sky, you're going to go ahead and select SBUS, and it's really that simple. One thing to note, though, is just remember on your ports tab, you do need to set one of your ports as a serial RX, and it actually needs to be the port that you have the receiver connected to. Makes sense, right? All right, easy enough. Let's see, RSSI signal strength. This can be a port and item. This is going to tell you how good the link is between your radio and the receiver in your aircraft. You're really probably not going to be using this analog input. You might if you have an old school receiver, but everything's digital now. In many cases, we're going to use this input off a receiver channel. Uh, so really just leave this off. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's see, 3D ESC motor features. You're probably not using this. Leave it off. Uh, if you're a 3D pilot, I guarantee we're not having this conversation. Don't worry about it. Uh, GPS, if you're enabling a GPS sensor, uh, you can use it for navigational purposes. You can use it for telemetry data. All kinds of interesting things. Um, again, this is kind of advanced. And if you're a long-range guy that's going to be getting into this, I don't think we're having this conversation. So these you're really probably going to leave disabled. Uh, so we're moving our way through. We're almost done here. Under other features, there's some important things in here. Um, things that I'm going to point out to you that you're probably going to use. Uh, telemetry. This is if you want two-way communication between the quad and your radio. If you have a receiver that is capable of telemetry, you're going to turn this on and it's going to allow you to use scripts in your radio to work the configuration in the quad, i.e. the Tyrannus Lewis script for either beta flight, butterfly, kiss, whatever you're flying, they all have their own flavor and that's what this option enables. Uh, if you're running LEDs, you want to turn this on. As you see, it then enables the button in the left-hand column so you can configure your LED strips. Um, what else? Air mode. Turn this on. Turn this on. Even if you're learning and you're flying in angle mode, I suggest turning this on. If your aircraft has an OSD, you're going to need to turn this on. Um, and again, you'll see once this feature is enabled, you then have the option to do the configuration. ESC sensors, this is going to be if you're running 32-bit ESCs and you're working telemetry. Coin flip, maybe you're using this, maybe you aren't. But again, 32-bit ESCs, you know if you have these, turn this on. Uh, Anti-gravity and dynamic filter, these are two options you should be using. I'm going to get into explaining these a little bit more when we get into the PID tab. I think it's going to make more sense when we do that there. Um, but yeah, anti-gravity, dynamic filter, turn those on, you won't regret it. D-Shot Beacon Configuration. If you don't have a buzzer installed in your quad, this allows you to use your motors in lieu of a buzzer. The downfall to this, though, is if your battery dies or if you eject it, you cannot beep your motors. 
Uh, I strongly recommend getting some type of battery beeper. They're like 15 bucks now, and I swear that's the best $15 you're ever going to spend. Um, but maybe if you have a racer and you're not going to be in a situation where you're going to get lost in the woods or a grass field, turn this on. You can have your motors make a little bit of noise. It'll help you find your quad if it's out of sight. Maybe even a tree. If it's in a tree, this can help too. And really our last item in here is beeper configuration. Uh, this will beep your motors if you enabled the previous item. But again, if you do have a beeper actually installed, this is everything that's going to cause that beeper to make noise. Some of these things are really freaking annoying and I always disable them. Um, and I'm going to go through those now real quick. Uh, some of which is USB. I disable that. Uh, arm, disable that. Let's see. Disarm. Ready. RX set. Okay, RX set, I leave it on. This allows you to enable it with like a failsafe or a switch. Battery low, if you don't have telemetry or an OSD, you can have the beeper actually beep at you when your battery's getting low. Arming, I disable that. Disarming, I disable that. Uh, gyro calibrated, I disable that. Um, but here's a couple of items that I would recommend leaving on. RX lost and RX lost landing. If you fail safe or if the quad loses radio link to your transmitter, it is going to automatically make it beep. Now that's annoying if you plug in a battery uh, and you don't have your radio on, but if you're ever in the situation where you just fail safe, this might save you, especially if you have a beeper installed. On uh, just the last few items on here as I scroll down, um, I would leave this enabled, uh, the crash flip. This is going to make the quad beep when you're in turtle mode, and that's a good warning, especially if you're in a race environment. Sometimes there can be a situation in a race where a spotter will run out and try to flip your quad for you to get you back in the action, and this is going to let them know that turtle mode is enabled, and it is not safe to pick up your quad. So if you're doing turtle mode and you got a beeper, turn that baby on. Uh, once you go through your entire configuration, make sure you save and reboot. Don't go by my setup here. This is a mess just for the purpose of example in this video. If you have questions on any of this stuff, definitely feel free to reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. While I'm done in here, I'm gonna disconnect. All right, guys, that's one more lesson. Hopefully, you're gonna be a little bit more proficient at the configuration tab. In my opinion, I think it's one of the more difficult tabs within Betaflight, Butterflight, they're very similar. Actually, even if you're still running an old version of Clean Flight, it's gonna be really close to the same. You're just not gonna have all the options. So this is gonna to apply to all of that. Uh, I'm done here, it's Thanksgiving. I gotta go hang out with some friends. So as always, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you can, maybe check out one of my sponsors, Hot Dog FPV at hotdogfpv.com. I love those guys. Maybe you can buy something for me, or maybe you'll even pick up some of my swag, my personal favorite, get yourself a Derek and his drone hoodie, or maybe a t-shirt for the summer. I don't know. Anything goes. All kinds of awesome stuff. All right, that's it. I'm done. Go have your turkey. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>